This week, we are leaving Newport, destination Maine coast, but we're making day sails because our autopilot isn't working, so we're hand steering the entire way. First stop, Hadley Harbor at the beginning of Cape Cod, then on to Provincetown via the Cape Cod Canal, where we explore this gem of a town and have our first encounter with gray seals, a favorite snack for the famed great white shark. I'm Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. We sold our home last year and moved aboard our Seawind 1600 Catamaran Wanderlust. Over the past year, we've sailed the waters of South Florida, the Keys, and the Bahamas, shaking down our new boat. We're now setting off on our journey to harbors unknown, exploring the world and connecting with people and places through the local cuisine. Subscribe now to join our voyage. About to leave. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. We left Newport, our home base for the past two months, headed for the main coast, the world-class New England sailing grounds. We had been pining for this adventure all summer, but we planned to make quite a few stops along the way. First up, Hadley Harbor, just outside Woods Hole in the southwest corner of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. About a 40 nautical mile sail, or rather motor sail in our case, it is an idyllic cove with an inner and outer harbor. There are moorings you can pick up if vacant, unless otherwise marked, or there's room to anchor when there aren't a bunch of boats enjoying a beautiful day. Keep in mind, most of the moorings are private, so if the owner returns, you'll have to move. We initially picked up a mooring, but soon opted to anchor on the outside off of Bull Island where there was more room. Just in front of a Forbes family mansion, it was a stunning place to overnight and work the next day. Curious to check out Woods Hole just across the channel, we put the dinghy in the water and headed out.
Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute is the world's leading independent nonprofit organization dedicated to ocean research, exploration, and education and dominates the landscape of this small seaside town. One way of finding a place to leave the tender no. is to follow other dinghies. We hailed the boat ahead and they motioned for us to follow along. This here is the Eel Pond Bridge. We had initially considered anchoring in Eel Pond, which upon seeing the bridge we realized was a completely ridiculous idea because the canal is at best 25 feet wide and our beam is 26 feet. It is cute, but we definitely don't fit. We did find a place to leave the tender, but it definitely wasn't the official dinghy dock. The people who showed us the spot were locals, so we figured it would be okay. Oh my goodness, look at Yoda. Look at Yoda. Come on, Yoda. <laughs> ah! Are you coming for me? <laughs> Good girl. She came back for me. Yeah. This is cute. We immediately stumbled upon a cute restaurant serving up fresh New England seafood and figured there was no better place for a beer and some dinner. Next leg, Hadley Harbor to Provincetown via the Cape Cod Canal. P-Town, as it's commonly known, at the tip of Cape Cod was about a 54 nautical mile journey. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe. It really helps us out. And tell me what you want this time. I won't take it to the heart, cause I know we won't make it out. Today is the day you understand how important is an autopilot on a large vessel like this, or especially when you're short-handed. Our autopilot is not working. We're working with PNG to fix it, but we still want to move forward, and so we're hand steering today very conservatively. I'm not deploying any large head sails, even if the wind would be perfect for this creature. But I may have, you know, for the two of us, it's hard to handle this creature without autopilot holding the floor. So hand steering. Our true wind speed is 17.7 uh, knots, we're going 7.2, uh, the wind is right in our stern, really. And tell me what you want, this time I won't take it to the heart, cause I know we won't make it out. We just entered the channel, headed for the Cape Cod Canal. Before entering the channel, we took the sails down because you have to go through the canal under power. We actually have a knot and a half of current going with us, so that's helping us out. We've been consulting the Eldridge book for all of the tides and the currents because in this area, it's really key to figure out when the current is gonna be going with you so you're not fighting 
you know, a knot and a half to two knots of current. Opened in 1914 and maintained by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Cape Cod Canal is about a 17-mile long artificial waterway connecting Cape Cod Bay in the north to Buzzards Bay in the south. Oh, I get so nervous every time. It always looks like we're never going to make it. Over three million people visit this thoroughfare annually, making it one of the busiest Army Corps projects. Wow. The current is absolutely ripping. We've got five knots of current with us. We made it into P-Town and we picked up a mooring because we're not too familiar with the area. It's a very expensive mooring though, <laughs> $3 a foot, so it's $156 for one night. But you know what, sleep is priceless. So we're happy to be here and we're looking forward to check out the town. I haven't been here since I was a kid, so it's been a long time. <laughs> Cape Cod is a sandy peninsula created during the Ice Age, only 20 miles at its widest point, yet it covers more than 400 miles of shoreline. For centuries, fishermen in search of a livelihood, explorers in search of new worlds, and pilgrims of one sort or another in search of a new life, down to the beach-bound tourists of today, all have turned to the resource-rich waters around Cape Cod. Provincetown, at the extreme tip of the Cape, is a spit of land consisting largely of deposited marine sediment that that was eroded and transported from farther south along the shore. A small resort town with a year-round population of just under 3,000, ballooning to as high as 60,000 in the summer. Key Town is known for its beaches, harbor, artists, tourist industry, and is a popular vacation destination for the LGBTQ community. So we are here in P-Town and we are 
walking to dinner after a little bit of a frustrating day. We were updating our B&G equipment and yeah. that should be really simple, right? Well, you think you, we, so. we have to admit that we really didn't update in a long time, so we had no. many updates. Yeah, we had a lot of updates, I but I mean, know. we actually had to take the the display, yeah. the train display Taking out. Taking the display out, how's that even like thought that <laughs> in order to update, to update the Triton display, you have to unscrew it, take it out in the back and then put a, a USB in the back. Why is it like an access from the phone? But thing? we did end up managing to update the yeah, BNG everything, stuff everything. and so we're yeah. good to go. Great. So hopefully now Tomorrow we can fix calibrate the, the compass. Yeah, calibrate the compass and then fix the autopilot. Fix the autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll There's see. a lot of stuff in there. It is super cute here. What a wonderful little town. That's amazing. It's adorable with all of the cute little shops and restaurants, the flowers, the plants are all kind of like a little wild. It has a very different feel than Nantucket, but it's yeah. still really super cute. Lots of great art galleries. And everybody's walking. It's all I know. Walking yeah. around. It's really nice and finally cooled down a little bit. It's super <laughs> hot today. It's really nice. We lucked out and found a number of gray seals, but they maintained at least a hundred foot distance, though we were able to get a bit closer with the drone. A fairly large seal, the bulls reach a maximum of just under 9 feet long and up to 880 pounds, and females average just under 7 feet and 550 pounds. Males are generally darker than females with lighter patches and often scarring around the neck. Females are silver gray to brown with dark patches. The gray seal feeds on a wide variety of fish cod, flatfish, herring, wrasse, and skates. However, they will eat whatever is available, including octopus and lobster. On average, they can eat 4 to 6% of their body weight in food each day, but do not eat during the mating slash pupping or molting seasons. Gray seals can dive to 1,560 feet for as long as one hour, and their excellent vision and hearing makes them effective hunters. Prior to Congress passing the 1972 Marine Mammal Protection Act preventing the harming or harassment of seals, they were hunted to near extinction for oil, meat, and skins. 
Since gaining protected status, the gray seal population has rebounded, and there are roughly 450,000 gray seals in Canada and U.S. waters combined. About 4,500 acres, or about 73% of the town's land area, is owned by the National Park Service, which operates the Cape Cod National Seashore, formed by John F. Kennedy in 1961 to preserve the pristine sanctuary for public enjoyment. There is something we need It's a leap of faith A step away from the comfort zone And be a little brave So take a look around you How far can you see? How far do you think you can run? Standing on your own knees It's a beautiful world out there Just don't pass on the Don't pass on the day. 